across the map with 2-1 mech and killing Protoss, which is uh, perhaps what Terrans do best. Yep, I mean, one thing that I will say is it almost feels like Gypsy was allowed to do what he wanted for far too long. Like, he never really faced any major amounts mm -hmm. of pressure. There was no Reaver, there was no DTs. There was a shot, it didn't ever really try to go in the base. So, I kind of get the feeling that Kingdom maybe played a little bit too passively and just didn't get his Arbiter energy up quick enough. Um, that was a little bit disappointing from him, but he certainly showed that he has the strength in him to show better games in the future in the SCPL. Well, he'll have to show better games if he wants his fans to cheer for him, uh, which is, of course, the goal of all pro gamers. It is. Uh, everywhere, especially Korean pro gamers. So I'm excited to see uh, if media can close it out with a 3-0. You know, we had a 4-0 uh, for uh, ninth team earlier on today. So excited to see if media can do the same thing. I believe, uh, I don't want to spoil it, do you have the overlay ready for our next player kicks? I do not, but I do have the game loaded up, so I am going to go over to the intro once again uh, before we go into this third game, just to give me a minute or so to uh, load up the next overlay, load up the next replay, and we'll see you guys very shortly. See you soon. It's showtime. Hello guys and welcome back to the SCPL. I switched back a little bit too early, uh, but so you saw me trying to fill, figure something out. But you are watching the SCPL. We are currently watching Naz versus Media, their first games in round two. And Media currently as the underdog, I would say, against Naz are actually 2-0 up against Naz. So that's kind of surprising, but there's been some fairly good games so far. And let's see if this third game is going to keep up with the tradition. And Media, are they going to take it home? Or are we going to make make our way slowly towards a possible ace match in the first map here? It's going to be uh, an uphill battle, I guess, for um, for uh, Nas. I feel like they do have a, much, a very strong player coming up next. Uh, I believe you have the overlay to show us exactly which players are going to be playing in our third match. I do, so let me just put the colors in. I'm going to switch back over to the overlay, and let's have a look at who our players are going to be in this third game. Okay, so for Naz, we are going to have the man who works himself to the bone, works 10,000 hours a week, it's Sugo, the Protoss player. He did a fairly good job last round, despite not having any time to practice. He did go 3-2 uh, in the last round. He hasn't played any PVTs, uh, but he did play some insane PVPs and PVZs. And his opponent here is going to be a player that you may be able to introduce. May I? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, wait, which player am I supposed to introduce? Sorry, I was, uh... The, the media player. Uh, okay, alright. My bad. In the yellow, in the right, playing for Team Micromedia, this is a very strong Macro Terran, Nyokin. It is indeed, and he is outside of Gypsy, who doesn't really play that much Brood War anymore, he mainly plays WoW, uh, but... 
regardless, uh, Chip, Nyokin is probably one of the most active of the media players. I think he was one of the first ones, really, to come back to Brood War. And if you've been watching the Bombastic Star League recently, you may have seen him dabbing in a little bit of ca uh, dabbling in a little bit of casting. Uh, he casted the finals and semi-finals with zero. And they were quite exciting, so if, uh, if you haven't checked those out, do go check out their VODs. Uh, they are up on Zero's YouTube channel, which is DidekZZZ, I think. Or it might be DidekZ, I can't remember. But either way, uh, I'll put a link to that in the thread later. But you can find it on TL and all the information. But let's see how the Media Terran, the Meme Terran, as I'd like to say, because uh, Media were known for their Terran players. Let's see how Ni uh, Nyokan does against Sugo here in this game as we move on to New Sniper Ridge. And now New Sniper Ridge, a very popular map, was around for quite a while. Uh, I think it lasted about two seasons of Pro League, which is quite a lot for a map. Uh, there's not really that many maps that have lasted that long. It was one of the most standard maps in that pool, and one of the most standard maps in the SCPL pool for round two. And uh, as you can see, four corners, Gas, thirds, no mineral only is on the map, and a double gas in the middle if you can somehow manage to wrestle control of that. But we're going to be moving on to another PVT. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the game, and let's see how Nyokan and Sugo do against each other here in the third game. Yeah, very, very excited to watch this. You know, Nyokin um, managed to, back in the day, make it to the finals of uh, many WCG USA qualifiers. Unfortunately, um, kind of struggled once getting there. I think he lost to, was it, uh, he lost to G5 in one, and he lost it in control in, uh, in another. So maybe not fond memories there, but thankfully, now he's on a team with both of them. So he is indeed. Maybe, uh, a, a, little bit of love to be uh, shown around. Very, very active in the foreign brood war scene right now. Uh, whether it's commentating, playing, scrimming, uh, he kind of just does it all. So all around nice guy. Uh, Sugo, uh, maybe a contrast to that, of course, the biggest fan of Kix's new map pool for uh, this season. So I'm sure uh, very excited to be a part of playing on a uh, stalwart map like, uh, like New Sniper Ridge. Yep, and speaking of Nyokan, he is starting us off in the top right-hand corner. Uh, Sugo here on the top left. Uh, they are going to be close positions, so no cross. Uh, this could lead to a more aggressive game, uh, depending on who scouts who, and in what order. So let's find out how this is going to go. And it looks like we do have an in-base pylon for Sugo, so we're not going to see anything too crazy from him. Yeah, if it's not the opening scouting probe, it's where the pylon is built that really tells you uh, what kind of a game we get a chance to watch. And I really hope we get a chance to see a macro game here. Um, I, I get a, it. It depends on the mood that I'm in. It's like, do I want to see just down and dirty cheese? Um, but sometimes it's just great to uh, see two players just really play straight up against each other. And it does look like for the time being, that's going to be the way that it opens. But really, it's about, you know, the number of factories uh, the Terran player gets into. Uh, usually we don't see bio. There are some aggressive openings like that. A lot of times it's there a reaction is. to getting a gas deal. But, you know, it's not. we're not going to see any of that. It's just going to open uh, about as standard as it is gets. Yeah, now Nyokan staying true to his roots, playing a little bit more old school, not going for that one racks fast expand, one racks double. He is going to get his gas, and he's probably going to look to either do an FD or go for a siege expand. Now, due to the layout of the bases, siege expand not as good on this map, but FD certainly quite strong given the high grounds outside of the natural. Yeah, you see a lot of FD, uh, a lot of very, very strong two base pushes here also from Terran. Um, I don't, uh, you know, this map reminds me of like maybe four player um, Heartbreak Ridge. It's got kind of that up and down and up and down nature as you try to progress out across the map. I don't think that, uh, you know, this is not a totally accurate comparison. I'm just saying sometimes it's a little bit uh, rough if you do get the ridge siege right in front of your natural. Yep, now we do see the Dragoon coming out first for Sugo, so he's not going to build that Zealot. And luckily for him, because Nokan's done a very good job back at home of building the anti-Zealot wall, uh, he's actually built two different spots that Marine can get through, so that would have been increasingly hard to get through. But uh, Nokan's got a good scout. He's seen that there's one gate range. Uh, it's not really going to be until about four minutes uh, that he'll send that 
SCB back in to really see what's going on. Uh, but back home, he's just setting himself up quite nicely. He's adding on his factory. He's added up to three marines, which makes me think we will see an FD here. Uh, but of course, he's pulled out of his gas uh, with two of his SCVs. So this does mean that he can get his uh, command center a little bit quicker. Uh, the Sugo looking to play a little bit more economically aggressively. Uh, we do have him going for a very quick nexus on 21 supply. Yep, and the SCV just in time. Nyokin is going to see that Nexus coming up and know that if he wants to, there oh, the is that though. opening. Oh, man, the <laughs> Try block. to. This is that Flash SCV that somehow scouts with 2 HP. He should die to, die in the uh, mineral line and, yeah, will get yeah. taken out there. But this is the about the best scouting information you can hope for as a Terran player in the early game. It is. He also saw the second gateway coming up as well. And because of what he scouted, rather than going for a tank straight away, uh, he's actually gone for a Vulture first. And now one strong move that Terrence can actually make here against this kind of opening is go straight into mines and just mine expand. You can actually expand up to three bases off just mines. As you know, their robotics facility and their observatory is going to be a little bit later. Now whether or not we're going to see no can do that is another story. Uh, yes, the things that you can do as a Terran player when you see uh, this Nexus come down, one gate Nexus is uh, always a little bit difficult um, to do anything aggressive if you see your Terran opponent getting greedy. Um, so already there's command center most of the way done. It's being built in the main, so not vulnerable to anything on the natural. Honestly, he could have built it on position, uh, yeah. but maybe that's just a, sort of a careful hallmark of Nyokin's play. Yeah, I think he also built it just before he got the full scout, so maybe he didn't want to risk it, because there's nothing worse than having your CC delayed so long, uh, uh, just yeah. because you have Dragoons just wailing down on the SCV. But two factories, for Nook, and unlike his teammate Gypsy, he's not going to be going for that quick uh, starport, of course, due to the layout of the bases. Starport, not as good on this map, but of course the mains are very, very large. And it looks like we get two probe kills on that vulture before it goes down, so really, really nice job by him. Yeah, that is uh, that, re that vulture is the reason optimism exists. The idea that maybe you don't think you can do it, or maybe you don't, you know, it doesn't seem likely, but you just believe. You believe in the power of the vulture. Uh, right up there with Defiler as the best unit in the game. Uh, it's, it's pretty close. Yep, and unlike the power of vultures, Sugo is going to rely on the power of technology as he goes for the robotic support. But he has, uh, he has of course, a shot now. He's going to be going for Reavers. And much for the same reason, drops aren't completely terrible on this map. The means are very, very big. Reavers have a lot of space to fly around. At least shuttles do, anyway. Flying Reavers would be just terrifying. <laughs> Get out of here all of a sudden uh outsider becomes protoss favored um uh, but uh, it already is uh, to be yeah, fair that... oh, get me out of here <laughs> not e okay we're not we're not gonna have this discussion here polarized <laughs> discussion we'll save that for uh you know discord where all problems are solved yep now we see sugo of course finally being able to mine from his natural it looks like he's gonna take a third base but he's taking it in close positions to the terran player and this could be very, very dangerous if he does so choose to go for this base. Yeah, I ever see a Protoss player expand towards a Terran, I always get that little thinking emoji, or the colon thonk colon uh, emoji, if you know what that one looks like. But it's just like the most perplexing thing, because as a Protoss player, you should probably always want to be just as far away from Terran as possible so that it takes them longer to siege expand. Uh, towards you, but any attempt that you make to expand towards them, especially if there's low ground, or especially if you're expanding um, onto the low ground near a, near a cliff, I, I, that's just always a, a mystery to me. So keep an eye on that as the vultures scout around the map and make sure that uh, Sugo hasn't expanded anywhere crazy. Yeah, no, I mean, 
one of the best locations he could expand to is actually the 7 o'clock. Not only does he gain control of that main, he gains control of the natural, but look at what Sugo's doing. He's moving in the back with his Reaver, in the front with the Dragoons and Zealots. So this is going to allow him to put on a lot of pressure. And is Nyokin going to be able to hold on to this? Is he going to be prepared for this kind of micro as the Dragoons are about to dive into the, uh, into the natural, it looks like? But a really nice yeah. wall, actually. He does have a nice wall with that command center. Um, he can cancel it if he needs to. There is a siege tank behind it, but it's actually siege a little bit too far behind it. Oh um, no, the so tanks! To... The tanks in the main nice. they're siege next to each other, and the reaver does a lot of damage. The zealots take out the tanks, and the reaver is going to have oh, free no. reign over the oh, SCVs. No, 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 no. <laughs> a huge shot there for the reaver. It's already got, I think. Uh, Eight kills. Oh. oh no, oh no, this Reaver is just dealing terrible, terrible damage. It the is. The positioning of the tank in the natural actually took a little bit too much of Nyokin's attention and allowed that Reaver to just get crazy scarab shots in the main. Yeah, now the Reaver did go down, but it did a lot of damage. Nyokin's currently not mining from his main. The, the command center actually goes down at the natural as well so he's gonna have to start that again he finally does have another siege tank here to defend but this is gonna allow sugo despite taking a very greedy uh, position third is gonna be able to get this up perfectly fine and he is gonna be very very happy with this oh and, yeah oh now you can feel like he's... now you can scan it immediately that was quite an incredible scan I mean, he knows what's happening right now. Anytime as a Terran player, you have either your tank count reset or you lose a bunch of SCVs, you're going to be uh, economically at a big disadvantage. So he knows what he's going up against. The third base is coming up, and that's just going to be very difficult for him to get into. Either he's going to have to siege push it um, or try to get vultures through. But with a pylon wall, that would take quite a while. Yeah, well, it looks like the uh, Dragoons are not finished yet. They're going to try and dive on in, trying to take out this turret to allow the Observer to keep that vision over the front of Nyokin's base. Uh, but it looks like we're going to finally have some Vultures. Speed is done for them. He is going to try and sneak one out, do what he can to get some uh, scouting done, but it looks like it may have got a little bit confused. He needs to make sure he uses those mines. Yeah, um, I mean, they're... They're scouting some of the bases, but they're not actually scouting out there like on these big ramps or ridges that kind of define new sniper ridge. Um, trying to get that mine Ooh, count nice up. Mine. I think that's going to be very important. Oh yeah, getting a nice dragoon kill right there. Free units killing, not free units. Sounds like a good trade to me. Yep, and it looks like Nerokun's going to try and take his third base now, but his tank count is very, very low. He has only five tanks at ten minutes, six tanks now. He's trying to build two tanks at a time, uh, but this has been his gas count has been a little bit low as well. So he's not really been able to add those units in, but another Reaver coming in, snipes. The SCV going for the science facility, and yet another Zealot Bomb does go down, but of course the shuttle goes down with it, and it looks like Nogokin should be able to hold on to this one. That's right, another SCV tragedy almost would have just spelled GG right now because he is still on those two command centers. The third one's going to try to land, but oh no, these Dragoons could actually kill this third for Nyokin. Yeah, they could. The tanks have sieged again. He needs to unsiege them and move up. He may be a little bit too late. The command center has stopped itself by accident, I believe. And there we go. It's going to try and move, but you cannot repair a moving command center. You need to store. You kind of can, but it's very buggy. But it looks like the tanks may have come up in time. Oh, just in time. Uh, I mean, that is a lot of damage done to it anyway, so it's still going to cost money to repair it. Can't repair for free, but either way, that was a very tense moment. Uh, if Nyokin had lost that, I mean, it just would have been almost impossible for him to expand again. He would have been so delayed. Uh, he would have been like just about maybe to mine out in his main by how long it would have taken there. That's a little bit of an exaggeration, but you get the idea. It would have been pretty bad, and this is a four-base Protoss that he's about to be going up against. Yeah, now Sugo with a very interesting mine clearing technique at the uh, fourth base of his now. Uh, he did actually opt to just eat the mine with a dragoon, uh, so that dragoon is going to be a little bit softened up for the next engagement. Looks like we do have plus one attack. Uh, no, that's plus two attack finally coming in for Nyokin now. 
And they can do a really good job actually walling this off. Gonna be feeling pretty good, but the Dragoon's coming in from behind, from the front as well. He's gonna need to try and repair the Zippo. He needs more SCVs here, or he could find himself losing this third base position. I don't actually think those SCVs are repairing for a second. Um, or maybe I'm just mistaken there, but yeah, there's nothing here to buffer for the tanks. Uh, several tanks are actually unseized right now, and this is just uh, going to be a very, very difficult position to hold. He needs to get this third base up and running, but it's actually going to be very hard for him to push units up that ramp. It and is indeed, that GG. is going to do it. GG Nyokin taps out. Sugo, really, really careful, calculated play. He opened with that one base expo, and I thought maybe that was going to give Nyokin a little bit too much breathing room, but that Reaver coming into the main and killing so many uh, SCVs early on just really set Nyokin pretty far behind. It did indeed, and I mean, uh, Suga did an incredible job there. He split his units up in really, really nicely as well. He sent some units to the bottom of the ramp of the third and some into the front. Didn't funnel them all through that choke, and it did mean he caught the reinforcing tanks as well. So, unfortunately, Naoken got a little bit picked apart in that third game, but that does mean we're going to go to a fourth game and that does mean we could get an East match as well. So we could still have yeah. a few more games in us here. I've got a bunch of games in me. I, uh, I really uh, hope that this series uh, is going to deliver, and it has so far. So I'm very excited to see what our next matchup delivers. It is. So let's host up the next replay. We will send it back to the intro for just a minute, and we will see you guys very shortly. See you soon. It's showtime. Okay guys, welcome back. You are watching the Shin Han Tank Pro League. I am Kix and with me is Rapid Casting. Casting from Korea at like 6am now, but his passion knows no bounds. Uh, he's still here, he's still fighting, and even after casting Popka today, his voice is still not dead, so congrats to him. I have no idea, I have no idea how you do it. It's the power of Hoisu, or Halls, uh, keeping me going here. My voice is uh, maybe not got too many more games in, but I do, and I'm very excited to see uh, what media has to offer here. Now, we were actually talking a little bit earlier because I, I didn't know exactly what to expect, I think, on the uh, rosters that were pre-released. Uh, it looked like it was going to be In Control that was playing here. Unfortunately, In Control is away, or at least on his way to uh, WCG, so he won't be able to hear, come here and, uh, and join us. So there's a little bit of a substitution coming through for media. There is, and they are both playing the colors that literally kill my overlay. Uh, but there's not really much I can do about that, but we are going to move on to our fourth game.